This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HP ZBook Firefly 14-inch G8. There is also a 15-inch if that's your thing. So the Generation 8 version has pretty much the same casing as last generation, but we have Intel Tiger Lake U series CPUs inside with um, optional vPro as well, and NVIDIA Quadro T500 graphics. Now that's not going to turn you into a blender jockey overnight. It's more for 2D work, that sort of thing. But this is still classified as a mobile workstation, despite the Ultrabook look and feel to it, which is a very premium one, and I'm still a sucker for that Deco Z they use. We're going to look at it now. So of course, HP has a whole line of ZBook mobile workstations. We reviewed a, quite a few of those. So if you want more powerful ones, there's a ZBook Fury, the ZBook Power, all that sort of thing. This is the Ultrabooky kind of model. That's more for your engineering managers who need to carry it around and look at designs, approve them, or maybe even sales folks who are showing off those designs, or just for those of you who need more than a basic Ultrabook offers here, a little bit more graphics, more RAM than you'd normally be able to get, and some really nice displays like the dream color display which is the top offering and was, that's what we have if you know hp and you know dream color that's a very nice wide gamut matte ips display that is great for content creators professional content creators now it's not a cheap machine because again this is a business laptop probably mostly bought by it folks in bulk it starts around 1535 dollars but ours is more like 2600 and change when you get it configured with the core i7 with v pro on board the dream color display and 32 gigs of ram and the nvidia t500 so not an easy spend but again it's a business product so you might want to use that new laptop to learn some new skills, maybe even skills that can pay for your next new laptop. And that's where our sponsor, DataCamp, comes in. They help you learn data science. And data science is hot right now. It's a good job that you can get that's going to be hot for years to come. DataCamp offers online courses in machine learning, marketing analytics, SQL, and data manipulation and interpretation, too, which are at the heart of so many well-paying jobs today. Whether you're just starting out or you want to advance your skills, they have video classes, exercises, and skill assessments tests too. All learning happens in the browser. There's no software to install and you can learn wherever you are, the train, the coffee shop, your backyard, using your laptop, your tablet, or your phone. They have Android and iOS apps. A DataCamp subscription starts at only $25 a month for unlimited access. Invest in yourself. Use my link in the description to try out the first chapter of any course for free. And now back to our video. So when I say this is a mobile workstation that's sort of a mobile workstation and more for the managers, that's because it has Intel 11th generation Tiger Lake U-series CPUs, which are Ultrabook CPUs, quad core 28 watt maximum. So it's not going to be something with an eight core CPU, for example, in terms of mobile workstations for those really who are doing a lot of the design and hard work here. But still, there's a place for this. And even if you're not in primarily the CAD business, if you're doing a lot of Photoshop, a little bit of Premiere, the kind of person who drives your typical Ultrabook to the brink, this is still worth a look. It handles demanding workloads fairly well for an Ultrabook. That is, the CPU performance doesn't drop too much over time. Usually with thermal constraints, that becomes an issue. And the NVIDIA Quadro T500 card has 4 gigs of DDR6 VRAM on board. It's sort of equivalent in the consumer space to the NVIDIA MX450, but it's clocked higher. And of course, it has the Quadro certification and driver's compatibility for folks who are doing creative kind of tasks on board. The RAM story is also interesting here. Most Ultrabooks top out at 16 gigs of RAM, sometimes 32, right? So this one goes 32 gigs max if you get it with the NVIDIA graphics and up to 64 gigs max if you go with just Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics. Why is that? Because the GPU, the dedicated GPU takes up space on the motherboard. There's no more room for RAM slots, so they solder it on board. So you could buy it with 16 or 32 gigs soldered if you get the, the one with the NVIDIA graphics. If you go for the Iris Xe, there are actually two RAM slots, which is why 64 gigs would be the maximum. And it's DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. So better than the average Ultrabook. For storage, it's pretty much typical. One M.2 SSD slot is 2280, full height, normal stuff. So you can get it from anywhere from a 256 gig SSD all the way up to two terabytes. We have a 512 gig SSD in ours. Because this is Intel 11th generation Tiger Lake, and you can get it with a Core i5 or a Core i7, that's up to you. And it has Thunderbolt 4, two ports, Thunderbolt 4, and that's also USB-C.
4.0. So good that. And you have two USB-A ports. You have HDMI 2.0 and a headphone jack. You have Wi-Fi on board, of course. Wi-Fi 6 is an Intel AX201 card with Bluetooth 5.2 and optional WAN. So you can get it with 4G or 5G. In terms of security and biometrics and all that sort of thing, fingerprint scanner is optional. The webcam is a 720p with a privacy shutter and a smart card reader is only $22 away from being yours for those of you who work in industries where those are still a thing. And because it's a business laptop from HP, you have their self-healing BIOS and the usual security metrics, including a TPM 2.0, which is becoming more relevant than ever with Windows 11 coming out and almost sort of requiring that you have TPM 2.0. So in terms of heat and noise, this is pretty much more like an Ultrabook than a mobile workstation, which means it doesn't get very loud even if you're pushing it pretty aggressively. The fans are maybe a little on the high pitch side, but, side, but I've found that really you just don't hear them that often or that loud. So that's a good thing. Because this is a thin metal clad Ultrabook, and again, it's 2.98 pounds, which is 1.35 kilos. We're talking a, a waifish but sturdily built laptop here. I, the surface temperatures, if you're pushing very hard, <laughs> can get hot. In normal use, they do not, but yeah, quite toasty if you do intend to push it hard. Doing things like heavy duty 2D CAD work or Premiere or something like that. I don't mean Zoom calls so much. Back to the display a little bit. Boy, are there are several display options here, but they're all full HD resolution. This is 16 by nine aspect ratio. The base model is only 250 nits and 45% of NTSC, which means it's not even hitting full sRGB. So you're probably not gonna be excited by that one or want that one, but that's the only one that's also available as a touch screen if you want it. The rest are all matte non-touch displays. Then there's a 400 nit display option with full sRGB coverage. That's pretty darn nice. There's a thousand nit privacy screen. This is it's not a normal thousand nit screen. It's done for the privacy feature if you need that. And then R to die for 500 nit dream color display with nearly full P3 coverage, 98% in really good Adobe coverage and some of the best calibration out of the box I've seen. I mean, look at that graph. Those bars are just barely there at all. It's a really nice looking display and you're going to enjoy it when you're just consuming content as well, especially because it's matte, super bright. It, ours actually exceeds that 500 nit claim and nice. And again, if you are doing things that require color accuracy, it's, it's there for you. It'll do the job. Again, typical of higher end business laptops and ultrabooks, the keyboard on this is very good because typically business folks spend a lot of time typing, right? The key spring and return, it just feels so good on this, so tactile. It's not a very deep travel keyboard. Certainly it's a pretty thin laptop, but man, it felt good. And I was typing really well, just like that. It's white backlit like most all business laptops are. Trackpad is pretty decent size, roomy enough, it behaves well, and of course there's the eraser stick kind of track point pointer we have on board, so those of you who are jumping ship from a ThinkPad can feel comfy with that, and that has dedicated clicker buttons, while the trackpad is the buttonless variety. Speakers on this are Bang & Olufsen branded, which is true of many HP laptops, business and consumer. They're stereo, they're up firing. They're okay. They have pretty good volume. I mean, not a lot of bass, but this is a 14 inch thin laptop. So not much of a way to get a lot of bass there, but for a business laptop, they sound pretty decent. And since it's a business laptop and since HP was well aware of the pandemic, there's a new feature. You'll see a little wiping hand on the taskbar and you can hit that and it'll disable the trackpad and the keyboard for a, with a timer so you can wipe it all down and keep it clean. And also they have the little thing that reminds you to get up and move around every so often. Gee, thanks HP. That's all sounding pretty good other than the fact that it is pretty darn expensive, right? Well, how about battery life? It's a 53 watt hour battery, which is pretty respectable and competitive with things like the Dell XPS 13. And we have a 65 watt fast charger and you're gonna need the 65 watts also if you are driving that NVIDIA T500 card, just to make sure it doesn't discharge while you're driving the laptop hard. Well, battery life is pretty good. That's one of the things Tiger Lake brings to the table here. And we actually averaged about 11 hours on a charge. And that's with a mix of productivity work, doing some streaming video, a little bit of zoom with brightness set to 200 nits. Obviously, if you dropped it to 150 nits, you might even hit 12 hours or if you're doing less zoom calls or something like that, but that's pretty darn good. 
taking off the bottom cover is really easy. Just unscrew the visible Phillips head screws and then something like a suction cup will make the job easier to pop that off. Here's our ventilation obviously right there. Underside of the metal cover, those are captive screws. That's why they are not falling out right now. And pretty beefy subframe there to keep it rigid. This is a very sturdy feeling little laptop to be honest. Battery right there. Our M.2 SSD is under this cover with a little pull tab right here. It's a Western Digital 512 gig in ours that benchmark pretty well. Here we have another cover and this would be, I would say, the soldered RAM, so not much you can do about that. We have the 32 gig model. And the Wi-Fi card is soldered on board here. We're talking small spaces, huh? Heat sink for the CPU and GPU combo and a single fan solution. It's really surprising how cool it runs given the fact that we have just a single fan here and tight design. HP did something right. And the speaker modules are here. This is the bottom side because they do fire upward. So that's the HP ZBook Firefly 14 Gen 8, and it's a good enough looking laptop in that Z tradition of angularity with the Deco logo on board, but it's sturdily built. I like the dream color display a lot, who wouldn't, right? And the keyboard on this is excellent. Two Thunderbolt, four ports, good enough. And the more RAM than usual, also quite nice. The drawbacks are, of course, that it is expensive. And despite the fact that it's called a mobile workstation, let's face it, it's really an ultrabook with low-end dedicated graphics. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.